What's up, everybody? It's your old pal, Spectator, with another crazy story from the Bible. You see this one right here? I was up close and personal with it. I saw it with my own eyes. So, hey, have y'all ever heard of this feller by the name of King Davis? That's right, King Davis, I think is his name. Well, he was a very good king. Handsome, too. <laughs> well, well, anyways, this story happens whenever old King Davis was still just a young man. He hasn't yet fully taken the throne, and King Davis, you know... What is his name? Wait, that's... His name ain't Davis? What, what's his name? Huh? David? So anyways, King Davis, he had these brutes with him, all right, and they was called his mighty men. Well, these men loved their king so much, they thought everything that old King Davis did was awesome. They was a ooing, and they was a awing, and they was a wowing. And, and as they traveled, this one day they came to a plot of land that was full of sheep and shepherds. Well, but instead of peaceful fields, they were a fighting for their lives. Well, being the noble hero that he was, King Davis sent his mighty men to battle and they protected all of the sheeps and all of the shepherds. Well, all that fighting and wrestling got their appetites a stirred up. And before long, their belly started a rumbling. Ooh. And old King Davis asked if the servants thought that the owner of the land would give them some victuals. That, that means some food. Since they fought and protected them the way they did. But these here servants, they explained to the king that the sheep and the land belonged to a very wicked and an evil man by the name of Nabal. I don't know if they called him that because his head was bald. Maybe his name was actually Nabal. Is that right? No, that's not right. All right. He, they said, well, this fella here, old King Davis, he is greedy and he's a nasty and he don't wash his armpits. And, but you can ask, okay? And since you saved his people and since you saved his sheep, Maybe this old wicked man will treat you different and finally be kind to somebody. But they said, good luck. So anyways, old King Davis's mighty men. David! David's mighty men, fine, okay? Davis's mighty men approached old Nabal and, and they bowed with great respect. And they asked him, could you spare any food for us, seeing as how we all protected your servants and your sheep and your land and all your people? Could you just give us some bread and water? They said, it don't have to be Popeyes. It don't have to be Chick-fil-A. It don't have to be from the Colonel finger licking good. They said, we just will take whatever you got. But kids mean old Nabal, I gotta tell you, he shook his bald head and he said, no way. He said, I don't care who old King Davis is. I don't care who you are. He said, I don't owe you nothing. He said, you can starve for all I care. He said, you can go take that message back to the king and tell him not to show his nasty, stinky face around my place again. Well, let me tell you, when the servants came back to old King Davis, and told him all that Nabal had said, Davis got mad. So Davis was so mad. And kids, I mean, he was a sock. He was so mad that old King Davis gathered 400 men. That's right, 400. That's right, I said it again, 400. Hundred soldiers. He said, when I get there, I'm going to destroy all of his stuff, everything that I spent my time protecting. And he said, old Nabal disrespected me so bad, I'm going to get every last one of them. He said, when I'm done, there won't be anybody alive left in his household. And they started a marching towards that house. And they started saying left, 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 right, left. And, and the more they marched, the 
angrier old King Davis became. He started just a drooling and a grumbling under his breath and, and I saw him a sharpening his sword. He was so mad I saw him punch two pigeons and a bunny rabbit on the way. And when they all arrived at Nabal's house, Davis expected to be met by swords and spears. He thought they was going to come out there with a Tommy gun or a machine gun, but no, Nabal didn't even come outside. No, he was up in the house. He was too busy counting his money. No, you see, Nabal didn't come outside to meet King Davis and the army, but a beautiful, lovely, gorgeous woman came out the door. This was Nabal's wife, Abigail, and we call him Ab Ab Abby around here. And, and wow, we, what a looker. I tell you that I will never know how the, in the world an ugly old joker like Nabal got a woman like Abby. But here she comes out just to meet old King Davis. Hey, and, Smash! Yeah? It's David! Dave, that's what I said, Davis. No, no, I said it's David. Yes, yeah, so anyway, she came out to meet old Davis and his temper was as hot as she was. <laughs> and she smiled at him and he softened just a little bit. And I was watching her closely, uh, not just because she was good looking, but because I didn't know if she was a secret ninja or something. She didn't have a sword in her hand uh, and she didn't have anger in her heart neither, but she dropped to her knees and she humbled herself before the king. She said, oh, king, you've walked with God. She said, you've been good to your people. You've always been a man of mercy. And she said, I know that my husband is crazy and ugly. Well, she didn't say ugly, but I know Nabal is mean and hateful, and I know he's wrong, she said, but I'm pleading mercy for him. And none of us knew how the king was going to react. Everybody slowly looked up at the king, and even though he had been so angry, he smiled. He helped her to her feet, and he thanked her in front of God and everybody. He had realized that she had kept him from falling into the ways of being an evil king. And that day, Abby stood in the gap. She stopped the wrath and the anger of a righteous king, and she showed how powerful a simple prayer can be. And by the way, guess what, kids? Just a little while later, old Nabal, he choked on a chicken bone, and old David called up Abby, and he married that girl. Well, all right, kids, this here is what we call the main points. And remember, this is what we want to make sure that you learn and remember from this here lesson. Main point number one is this. There will always be people who don't appreciate what you've done for them. I know that it ain't a popular thing to hear, but it's the truth anyways. You see, we don't do nice things for people so that we can get something in return. We don't do nice things for our neighbor, our brother, or our sister just so we can hold something over their head. We do nice things for people because that's just the way we are in the kingdom of God. We know how to bless people who can't bless us back. And we know how to give to people who have nothing to give us in return. And so while there's always going to be Nabals out there that after you protected his people and his sheep and his land and all this stuff, he doesn't do anything in return, that's going to happen, kids. But that's the way of the kingdom, you see. We keep on loving people even when they're hard to love. Main point number two is this. The judgment of God is very real. You see, whenever the king was met by that old wicked boy. The king got very angry. The king decided that he was going to take vengeance in his hands and so many times we forget that although God is very much a God of love, he also says in his word that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. And so I want you to realize that what we do does give a response from God, all right? He will forgive you. He will love you. But just like old King Davis got upsot, sometimes the Lord can get upsot too. And I don't want the Lord himself upsot with me. Main point number three is this. 
There is untold power in the prayer of intercession. Intercession? Tater, that's a big word. It is, you're right. But let me explain what it means. You, you know whenever you're playing football and then the, that, that one feller, he throws the ball and then somebody was supposed to catch it, but somebody jumps up in the midst of them and catches it instead. You know what they call that? They call that interception, right? Well, this is just like that, but we call it intercession. Intercession is where I get between God that's about to judge somebody and the person that's about to be judged, just like that football player is getting between the ball and the receiver. And you see, when, when we uh, humble ourselves and when we get on our knees, just like Abby did, you see, it can stop the judgment of a righteous king. You see, she, 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 she got before King Davis and she said, you've got a history of mercy. She said, you've forgiven people that were wrong in the past. And she said, I know that that's the kind of future that you want to have. And, and kids, that stopped Davis from killing everybody in the household. And if that type of prayer was enough to stop King Davis, Imagine how powerful mine and your prayers are before a God that is righteous and even more merciful than Davis ever could be. And then that leads us finally to, power, to, to, to point number four, and that's this. Just like we can be like Abby for others, Jesus was like Abby for us. You see, the Bible says that Jesus is our mediator. He's the one that goes between the Spirit of God, the judgment of God, and those of us that have that judgment coming to us. And, and did you know that Jesus got between us and the judgment that was coming? And the Bible says that He took that judgment all upon Himself. And that's what drove Him to the cross. And, and kids, this is what leads us into our memory verse. You ready? The Bible says, Therefore He is able to save completely those who come to God through Him. Here's why. Because He always lives to intercede for them. And that them there is you and me. The Lord ever lives and He is always bowing and getting in between us and the judgment of God because His mercy endures forever. Let's all pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this lesson. I thank you, God, for, for teaching us what an intercessor like Abby can do and most of all, what you did for us as an intercessor. Lord, you got between us and what was coming to us and you took on the cross just so we wouldn't have to. And so, Lord, I pray that you would show us that our prayers are powerful and that just like Abby uh, was a bride, we are your bride and we bow before you and we humble ourselves and we bring before you family members and people that are crazy and people that have done wrong and we say, Lord, forgive them. Lord, you've had a history of mercy and we know that you want to have a future of mercy. And so just like Davis stopped his judgment upon Nabal, we say, God, withhold your judgment from our city. Withhold your judgment from our families. Withhold your judgment, God, from the people that we know have done wrong, Lord. Give them a space to repent. And everybody say it with me. In Jesus' name, amen. And we'll see you next time for another awesome story of Kingdom Kids.